All right, welcome everybody to the August 15th meeting of Pembroke Conservation Commission. This meeting is now open. Um, present, we have members Art Edgerton, Rick Madden, Sharon Tools, Greg Walsh, myself, Andy Stevenson, Agent Bob Clark, and our administrative assistant, Mary Kearney. Um, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a video and audio broadcast on PAC TV Government Access Channel for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in this open session will be recorded. Um, follow agenda. Okay. 730. Um, so our first one got continued. That was the ANRAD for 73 Taylor Street. I think uh, the only one that didn't tell those are Rick. Rick, you didn't get the agenda in the uh, Brick Hill Road, right? Oh, okay, Rick. No, I didn't get it. So we have uh, seven minutes then until uh, 7 p.m. for the RDA. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we need a motion. Okay. Move that we continue 30, 73 Taylor Street, file 56, 967 to August 29th at 8.20 p.m. 8 o'clock. Uh, anybody second that? No second. Second. Okay. Uh, it's a motion to continue the uh, in-rent hearing for DEP file SC 56-967 to August 29th, 2016. It's been seconded. Is there any other discussion on it? Or? Okay. We're going to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have another one here, too, at 8 o'clock. Yeah, we have to wait till 8 o'clock. We have to wait Okay, then we have some uh, discussion that we can do for a few. Uh, we have a request to use Herring Run Park on Sunday, August 28, 2016, from 1 to 6 p.m. for a Boy Scouts Court of Honor with electricity. No cook fire needed. Any? Move that we allow the Boy Scouts to use it for Court of Honor on August 28th at 1 to 6 p.m. We have no charge for the use of electricity. Second. Okay. The uh, motion was made to allow the Boy Scouts to use the um, Herring Run Park. Any other discussion on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. Uh, we have five more minutes to do. Uh, uh, we have a so, I don't know if anyone has even looked at the plans for Route 14 plan changes down in the area by the barber shop where they ran into engineering problems. Uh, basically, uh, what they're asking to do down there is to put in a, what do we call it? The soil? The, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, very fancy piece of cement work that takes and separates the dirt and the oil and all and lets the water go. Just uh, we asked for this all in about eight places along there when the plants first came out and were told no, too expensive, too hard to maintain, everything else. Now that DOT is into a problem, they decide they want to use one of them. Right at that to solve their problem, but 
it's kind of hard to swallow when we're trying to clean furnace pond. So that's going to put more water in directly into furnace pond? It's, it's, it, it'll dump right up back into the brook there, but it's going through this fancy cleaning setup. And we, we had wanted it on every one of those locations all the way along. And they had told us, no way. So this is an improvement over what we had before? It is an improvement over what we had before. Oh yeah, it's, it's this is a, this is as good a water quality that you can get. It, I'm not saying it's a it's it's everything you want. It's as good as technology will let you have right now. Yep. And because of the situation there, there really isn't a whole lot of other things that we can do. You can't make the water go uphill. Basically, that's what they were trying to do in that area. So we're at least cleaning it. Do they need this? Is that the one that needed the special truck to clean out? Or? Yeah, they have to have a special truck to clean it out. And all they had all, there was all sorts of reasons for not using them. But yeah. when they got into trouble, then it was okay to use it. Okay, put one in there. I saw that with the big dam and the plane. That looked pretty nice. So. It's a... It's a yeah. It's a change of plans. When we have a change of plans, we can handle it different ways. One is just to accept the change of plans. We can ask them to refile for another hearing. Um, I would suggest just accepting the plans because we aren't going to gain anything by having a hearing, um, except we're going to lose a whole lot of time right. on the on the project and, and all that. And, they, def they definitely have gone through these plans and done all this, but they they worked hard to try to find some other way to take care of the water in that area. And, uh, it's just no room in the room. Right. 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 Okay. Maybe so, that's why. Is that something we can vote to approve now? Or? Yep. Okay. We still got time. Did everybody read the plans and see it? Did you see the, uh, the train? I read the letter. It was, yeah, they were emailed last week, I think. Storm Scepter is the name of the device in the Storm Scepter. They definitely work. There's a pl other places in the state that they're put in and they have they're working. Uh, one of the biggest complaints is they work too well and have to be cleaned yeah. often, but that just means that they're doing what they were put in for. Once it's in, how are we going to address that issue of cleaning where we don't have the equipment for the personnel? Well, that, that's D, D, that's DPW's yeah. real problem, and uh, the town of Duxbury has a has the equipment to handle these things. Uh, so the town of Pembroke will have to make an arrangement to rent them from, from there until such time as we can convince people that we're putting up with these in around the pond uh, to warrant having our own equipment. How often does that need to be cleaned up? At least twice a year is what they say minimum, but a lot will depend on what it's getting sure. for, for usage, and that will only be determined as they as they watch it. Is there a plan B other than Duxbury? What? Is there a plan B other than Duxbury? Or oh, there are other before? places. There are other places that have it. You can and rent this commercial. But, but Duxbury does have the equipment, and uh, I understand they've already, you know, negotiated with them. To, uh, oh, okay. Okay. Is that something we can approve now? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah, I move that we accept the Route 14 plan changes. I'll second that. I second. Okay. So the motion on the table is to accept the changes to the Route 14 plan. Uh, it's been made and seconded. Is there any other discussion on it? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Just to our 7:40, we have a uh, an RDA for 65 Pine Tree Lane under Durant. Hi, how are you, sir? Good, thanks. Thank you.
Hi, Joe Webby, Webby Engineering, and with me also is the uh, Durants. And this is a uh, Title V tear, 65 pine tree, and here is an isolated vegetated wetland <coughs> in this area that we think just collects drainage uh, that was delineated by our office. And what the Durants would like to do is obviously they would like to upgrade the septic system to Title V standards. Uh, currently, there's a uh, pair of cesspools on this side. Uh, there's one big, huge uh, ledge outcropping right in the middle of the backyard, and then this goes drastically uphill. Uh, so in order to eliminate pumps and be able to get their gravity, what we would like to do is install a septic system uh, approximately 37 feet from the isolated vegetated wetlands. What's the distance you normally have to be? 50 feet. Yeah. Who delineated the wetland? I did. Yeah, it's mostly uh, fragmite in there. So basically for drainage. There's no outlet that I could find. Just, there's there's a, actually a house here and then a house on all the So street. it's not street drainages? Well, I think it is street drainage. Street drainage. Yeah. Of rock, are you going to be? It doesn't go down in the way it feels when you've done enough test hole. Well, we, we dug a test hole here. We did hit the side of something that day, and yeah. it was still going down. So we that's why we kind of kept it at right what there. depth? At what depth? We, we got down a good 10 feet. So Before we, you hit? Yeah. And did you do one test? Or did you do we just few? we no, we just did one test hole in the uh, side. Right, the ledges. No, not the ledges up. Well, yeah, but in yeah. addition, yeah. up the ledge. So the new system is that whole big part there. Yeah, yeah the, the soils are pretty restrictive. Uh, so for the uh, three bedroom house, it's that size. Restrictive in slow perk. The slow of the perk. Yeah. Big deal. Right yeah, do you feel they work as well as the others? I think that they do, uh, only because they force people to pump. I agree on that, but do they work as well as... Oh, yeah, they work. They work as well. You, think? Oh, yeah. you go out there and if it's clogged, then... Yeah. Oh, I know. You're the first person out. Yeah. for that silk sock coming down, like taking a hop right off the center line up the 90 at the bottom up top. Up here? Yeah, up top. Right here, that, that line right there. Or is that just how it was for a fish? I, I, I honestly don't know. I didn't draft the plan up. Yes. You can certainly keep it straight. If, yeah, I yeah. was just wondering if there was a reason, if, there, if there's going to be machine work in there that's going on. I, I don't to see any machine work other yeah. than uh, right in this area. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's so we were wondering. I just didn't know whether if there was a purpose for that or not. And you've got a barrier in here, Joe, that because of our grading on that side here. Yeah, th yeah, there's a barrier. We want to break out the barrier right along the, uh, the wetland edge. Sure. Well, excuse me, the edge of the system at the wetland side. What's that going to be made of? Uh, that's a uh, plastic. It's like a swimming pool on it. 45 mil. So that stays there permanently? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. But the other one, if you take away after it's constructed. Right? No, that one will stay. All right. It appears that this 
one of the cesspools is uh, the tank is over the cesspool, or is that just drawing? I think it's just because we have this at a tent scale. Okay. Yeah. That's what I have to say. Okay. Do you leave the all the structure for the old tanks in there, or do you take that out? No, they'll be taken out. They have to be pumped dry and then either crushed or taken out. No, they just tanks. Do they have bleaching of stone around them? Tanks. Just tanks. There's no stone around them at all. They would just stone around them. Right. So that'd be taken out as well. No, they would leave the stone. No, leave the stone. Just take the stone. Gotcha. Are they stone? Hmm. They're stone. Stone. Or, or the brick. It's like brick. 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 Yeah. Okay. How much of this is remove and replace? Just uh, the depth of the remove and replace is the elevation of the core, which is about two and a half feet. Excuse me, three and a half feet. Yeah, just that little top and sub sort of. Yeah, keep that on site to. Yeah, they, they'll use that for the uh, for this grading on the sides. So wherever we stock it, might we're going be, to make sure that it's might that be that good that spot there. That's, yeah. that, that's in quotes. That's all. Yeah. yeah. inch one. Yeah. We always call for that one. We yeah. don't call for the little ones. Uh, we have, somebody's got a calculator, 70 by eight and a half. Pretty big pile. By three and a half, yeah. yeah pretty big pile. Divided by 27. Slope and if it isn't good perkable, it can, just, it can slump even, as you know, if you get the wrong weather. Oh, yeah. Comes. You read to this. What is the waiver that you got on the gallons per bedroom? Pembroke Water Health has a, a regulation. They increase the size of, above Title V yeah. to 150 gallons per bedroom. Uh, Title V is 110, so we're just trying to reduce the size of this back down to the Title V standards. And was that a Board of Health issue? You get that approved from the Board of Health? Yes, that has to, yeah, that's a local regulation. Yeah. Oh, these three or four have to be approved at the Board of Health. Yes, and they, ha they have been or we're waiting for the waiting for the Still waiting, okay. So we're waiting on. So we're waiting for the Board of Health? Yeah, we're waiting on the Board of Health. Okay. Okay. How broad is that? Well, that's, we'll have to say that they had the plans for over two weeks, so I don't know. It's a pretty short time. Yeah, it is. It's a very short period of time. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I have no problem with it. I'm going to close. One second. Yeah, that's a question. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. The Bragway, the existing Bragway right now, uh, the potential buyers are looking to extend it five feet into the into this into right. You want to move it five feet closer to the weapons. And I told him I'd ask them if that was possible. I think that would be a whole different issue. Yeah, it's, it's, sure. Sure. it's a whole different permitting process. To wide, to widen it five feet? Right. So it it looks like cut off on one side and added on the other. It looks like part of the driveway is on the other people's property. And the other people don't want to allow it. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't see that. That's the issue. We're not adding any more okay. surface. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, looks like some of it's actually out of 100 foot, but except for right yeah. now, mostly it's out of 100 foot. Yeah. 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 That's high ground fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is nice and high. Yeah. 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 Quite yeah. elevated. Yeah. I don't see that. I don't see it. That's, that's a problem. Yeah, I. I, I it's an access issue on a neighbor, I think. The right thing for the neighbors to move forward. Okay. So we have a motion to close the area. I have a motion to close. All right, we have a motion to close and second it uh, for this hearing. Uh, any other discussion on it? Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed?
Okay, that's the blue we issue is negative three with conditions for health approval. Driveway may be moved over. Normal, normal other ones, Joe, we um, notify the conservation agent when the silt sock has been installed or before working on it. Anything else we need to do? How many wood chips will be up one side and out for a sock? All of that. Bob? On the up one side of the Sock, how much wood chip do we recommend? Uh, depending on the ground, two or three inches is all we need to seal. Okay. And 18 is a pretty big. Yeah. Actually, you can walk, step on it a few times and it's going to seal the bottom. Oh, yeah. 18 yeah. inches is something. Yeah. It's a big sock. Okay. So, it we second that? Second. So, okay. We have a motion to issue a negative three determination. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seven fifty hearing. Uh, we have an RDA for thirty four Pond Street noons. Anybody out there? Yep, noons out there. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. No, no well, seven fifty. Seven fifty. Oh, okay, not me yet. Is it noons? What's the name? Yeah, I'm um, Grady Consulting for Seventy Tool Trail. Okay, okay yeah. so that's eight. We're looking for one more ahead of you. Okay. Okay. Um, Huh? Are you yes. for the new one? Yes. Okay. Okay. That hearing is now open, so if you want to step up and see what we have. Okay. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Frank Jones. Hi, Frank. How are you, sir? Good. Hi, uh, James. We really just need you to tell us what you're going to do. Oh, we're going to put an in-law apartment onto an existing house. Okay. And um, the property comes within 75 feet of the wetlands in the back. Um, okay, go ahead, sorry, would you? Yeah, yeah I know. No? That's, that's the building for the what's uh, going on. Okay. Um, so we propose on putting a silk fence up, I guess, and uh, a wattle would stake it down and protect the wetlands while we do it. Yeah, it is. And that's what I want. Pretty much the same 
Bishop. Would it help approval yet? Yes. In fact, all the papers are in the building department now. Just wait for this. Oh. Ours, we have a uh, silt sock or equivalent. It has to be a 12 inch diameter or larger. 12 inch diameter water? Yeah. Or oh, silt sock, I mean, whichever way. Oh, double stake day bales, if that's what you want. Yeah. What does the 12 inch come in? Does it come in 100 or does it come in? You don't know. Oh. I only have to I've look used, at it. <laughs> I've used a 6 inch water and that's in a 100 foot roll. A 12 inch with a puppy. Yeah. Well, that might be a lot there. So depending on what's yeah. easy to handle, yeah. it might do Yes, the usage as an animal because it would have the side of the buffer so the first one already been here, right? This is yes. Yeah, yeah, this is so yes. So this is existing already. They're standing on top of it. That's what they can put on the side there. Okay. Yeah, this is the proposed addition here with a oh, deck on the side of it. Right? No, no, this is the existing. Oh, okay. And then the septic tank's going out the back and tying into the system. Is this the line? That's the property line here. And this is the wetland line here. 20 feet. 20 feet. That's to the other side. So that's to the property line. That's so where we're okay. That's the wetland. That's the wetland, yeah. So we're okay. It's pretty sure. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. It's pretty, it looks pretty flat yeah. as well. It is. Yeah. It only. Are you going to pour foundation? Yes. Wash out station. Wash out station for the truck. Or Wash I'm going to have a dumpster on site. I'll yeah, have them wash. Wash the dumpster? Yes. Noonan, Noonan takes concrete. <laughs> um, I just I never heard of that one before. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> I'm not saying it doesn't matter. I just yeah. do it. Interesting. Yeah, that's just part of our standard thing. We just don't wash it off so it doesn't run down into the water. Right. Yeah, we'll give it all our shirt. Yeah. No. Okay. Either that or I'll um, put a hole for it, put a um, top in it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It'd probably be cheaper and easier. Yeah. yeah. It in. When he excavates, I can I can put a hole. Don't bury it. No. No. Yeah. Just to keep any runoff. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's actually where you go. Okay. Okay. I have a motion to close this hearing. Do I have a second? Okay. You second. The motion has been seconded. Uh, any other discussion on it? Questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Health approval, we just need a copy of it. Health approval. I think she's got, it to, already sign I think she's got to sign off on the okay. Okay. And siltation barrier consisting of either double C cable. She has to sign off on that. Good. Right. Double stake cables or silk sock for the third time. 12 inches or greater. Siltation barrier to be looked at. Yeah, you just when well, it's when it's set up before they go too crazy, just give them a call. Right. Now look at yes. it. Yeah. Sure it's all right. It's the end of the end. So the motion's been made to issue a negative three determination. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 On the silt on the wall, a hundred feet or or less, fifty feet across the area. Well, yeah, you know the ad right now. When I come to look at it, as 
long as you're going to keep the wetland protected, that's what, what it's there for. It's basically for yeah. the property line over yeah. this way past. past yeah, that, I mean, that's more addition. than enough. Yeah. This is the feature you're flat, you're not yeah. going to have it. It used to be a runoff with, just oh, within yeah. a scope yeah. of work to keep everything from going. Well, yeah. what they have there is this is a drainage dish out here, and there's a culvert here, and that must get blocked up. And it just gets wet there a little bit, so there's wetland plants there. But basically, that's why it kind of jogs out that way a little bit. So, okay. all right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Well you. said. Thanks. Okay. Now, ready to open a eight o'clock meeting. Notice of intent from 70 Tool Trail, Stephen Lehman, DEP file SE 56 968. Uh, Andy, on this one, we can hear the hearing. Okay. Can't issue because the uh, there's a problem with the treasurer's office or something, yeah, or something that will be taken care of. But if we listen to it now, then we can just take care of the rest of it without having to come back. Okay, so we're not going to vote on this. We're just going to hear it. We'll get the planning review. We can actually we can actually vote on it. Every, everything went, that was taken care of on Thursday. And it was the water bill. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, that was paid. Okay. So we can actually. Are you paying it on Thursday? No, it was already taken care of. It was already taken care of? Yeah. Okay, they can know. Yeah, Yeah, Thursday was taken care of. Uh, so this is a notice of intent. Uh, do we have the green cards for this? Uh, green cards were mailed to me, but now, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, and we have something in the folder there. What's that? Here's the folder. Okay. This says checks. Oh, right, 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 right. Thank you. And here's copies of the plans. Thank you. Is this the little house who was for a It's still vacant. This place or it be Project here is a 70 tool trail. Uh, we're proposing to raise the existing house and to replace the existing septic system uh, within 100 feet of the buffer zone of Little Sandy uh, Bottom Pond. Um, the existing house sits in right this area here. We're placing it in the exact same location. Uh, septic system currently is out front. We're replacing that with a new system out front as well. Uh, we uh, will need ZBA approval for this, and we'll need Board of Health approval. Uh, we do not have either of those, and uh, we have submitted to both of those. Uh, we're proposing uh, silt sack and limit of work down between the pond and the in the work. Uh, it's shown here in red. Uh, the closest distance uh, to the pond from the silt sack is 21.5 feet. Uh, from the proposed deck, which is actually uh, above ground, um, it's not touching the ground, it is uh, 29.2 feet. And the closest point to the house is 39.1 feet. Right, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Is this a dig out? As far as the septic system? Um, we will be take. We'll just take the material out, and there's no five foot uh, dig out around. No. We'll be using the uh, natural material. 
Yeah, we'll haul that off site. Uh, the existing system. Yeah. East goes like straight downhill too, yeah, it, from, it, from it, the road down to the, the door. Except for uh, as far as uh, this, these steps here, yes. Yeah. It's pretty steep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any variances for this? Uh, for the septic system, yes. And uh, like I said, ZBA will require a special permit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Derek, we're going to remove what's there first of all. Right? All right. What is there? Yeah. Um, um, the existing house is uh, pretty much falling and it's broken windows. It's been vacant for a while. The system. Um, oh, for the system? Uh, I don't know what the, what the exact system is uh, is there. Uh, there are no records. I do know it's on the side of the house. The existing house is on a slab on sauna tubes on it does have a nothing? It ha does have a foundation. Uh, it's, uh, it's a walkout uh, basement. Um, so yeah, it, from the street it looks like uh, yeah it's a walkout. So it's a, it's a full basement. So you're you're going to be removing all of that, putting a new down foundation. to scratch basically before you start. Correct. Coming back again. Yeah, you wouldn't want to uh, keep what's there right now. Right. Okay. I'm going to have to caution that. I'm going to be the only be, you know I'm going to have to watch while we're tearing down that nothing goes. I was thinking the same thing because. Not only am I going to be watching, there's a bunch of neighbors on the other side that are going to be watching what's going on there. It's kind of tight. Yes, you know. it is tight construction. Yeah. Uh, we there's no room to stockpile on the lot that I can see. Well, it has so to be I removed right away. When you're excavating, you're going to be playing in and out with it. Correct. Right. That's one of the conditions that we won't, we can't stockpile on the lot. How long do you anticipate the ground being open to the grades that are there and the loop over? Just concerned about a really big flash thunderstorm and there goes the silt sock and there goes the pond. I don't have uh, control over that. I'm not sure who the contractor is who's, who's going to build it. Uh, typically, the, uh, these types of projects are six months to a year. Uh, that's my concern. I don't think the hole will be open. Right, the foundation would be sooner. Yeah. yeah. See these? What are we using for? Okay, let me see it now. Okay, 12 inch, 12 inch diameter. So it's hot. Yes. I don't feel comfortable. With I, again, I just want to caution that the steepness of this whole thing, you're going to have to be careful when you've got an open hole that we don't get. Wash out because 12 inches sounds good, but it's nothing to that some point. water coming off a tool down through a, yeah. a new dug hole can go through 12 pretty quick. Yep. So, any heavy rain at that time, we're gonna, someone should be watching what's going on. Okay, I think also um, additional stakes couldn't hurt. I mean, it's a big slope, probably one of the biggest we're going to deal with. Yep. In fact, you might, might even want to do something at the road edge when you've got an open hole, you know, another set of smaller hay bales, something just to make sure the water goes by your excavation and, and goes down the road somewhere else rather than over the edge. And um, we're fine with that, and uh, if they, when that's not in use, they should have it on site and use it at, uh, yes. as extra, just to yeah, make sure. So a water or something there so that, exactly. that yeah. we can direct any storm water out of, off the project site, not, uh -huh. not, th not through it. Right. I think it's just something that would be a smart thing all around to get it secured. You know, the open holes as soon as you could. I mean, that would just be in good faith, obviously. If it does not work, it's going to be a big problem. We'll go over that uh, when we start construction. So 
you would come back to talk to us again before? Uh, typically, we have a, a meeting when you uh, put the erosion controls in. Those are expected, so we can talk to the contractor. Do you know who's building this yet? I'm not sure yet. Okay. Is it deck off the back wood or concrete? Uh, that's wood, so it'd be raised, it's like I said, off the second floor. Yeah, my biggest concern would be if a wash up that would be the worst thing that happen. So I would think your efforts would be really towards preventing that. Always possible. Okay. It's timeline and stuff to be. So it seems to be shown we talk to the contractor. Yeah, the contractor will have to just move once he stands on the same. Sewer systems all H2, whatever. Sewer system H10. Yeah, it's an H20 loading. Um, we're going to be able to park a couple cars on top of it, and um, there's obviously a slim parking in that neighborhood, uh, so this should help um, this house. There's no parking in the neighborhood. <laughs> I just want to put it that way. It's next to I have no problem with it. Let's get some questions. Is there any abutter kit for this project? Would you like to say it? I think our concerns are the same that have already been spoken. So yeah, yeah. The, the runoff is what we all want to watch for. Yeah. Because no question about my that. property also has right. the same depth. Yep. Exactly. So, be careful. Downhill. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. To a beautiful spot. Oh, absolutely beautiful spot. Will there be trees removed on the site as well? Yeah, there'll be a few, yeah. Well, that big, huge pine tree that knocks the power out of everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Just <laughs> show me which one. The hugest one in the neighborhood. Yeah. It's going to go. It's going to go. The one that's where you park in the Yes. Is yes. so there any trees coming down? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's, your, there's one right in the middle of the front of the property is where it is. <laughs> Well, they have power interrupt this like yeah. 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 a lot of times, regretfully, insurance wise and stuff, they got it all. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any other questions on this? Or? No. Okay. And will we close? Motion to close has been made. A second. Okay. We have seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We would build in accordance to the plan with the conditions that Mary is writing out here as fast as we talk. <laughs> what uh, negative sort of thing? This is not negative, this is a NOI, so we, it's not a negative, it's just that we build the plans. <laughs> If the treasurer and you can get get together, then we can. Okay. We have a motion to. We have a motion to build in according with one, uh, two plan. Yeah, with our standard boilerplate exceptions. Um, do I have a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nice hat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Do you have plans to each other? So for appointments, we have a uh, eight, eight ten appointment. James Gallagher. Are you James Gallagher? Hi James, what's going on?
Great wall, P. Jimmy Gallagher. This is James Gallagher. He's uh to get in the open space vacancy, open space committee. Okay. I don't know if anyone else has read has read the resume. I have not. If it's in the mail, I have not got it. Have I read that? Came with his his qualifications. I shouldn't say his resume. His qualifications came with the uh, uh, his request for yeah. being appointed. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you want to be on the open space committee? Oh, because I've always been interested in open space. Um, I was a recreation commissioner in uh, Cohasset. Uh, I was involved in uh, passive recreation, the woods, the paths, and things like that. Um, I've, um, I grew up in the woods in upstate New York. Uh, I have a dairy farm up there that I maintain the land. Um, I've just always been interested in it, and uh, I've got um, a lot of different committees and things like that. that um, uh, I was involved in Cohasset, uh, which is should be my resume, and then um, I was a selectman, so I'm used to uh, town politics. <laughs> I thought that was what I was getting to. Uh, when you, if you read what what he has done in his past, then if anything, he's a very overqualified. Person. Thank you. <laughs> and we can surely put a good and use in, on what we have. <laughs> Like I said, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing what you love. Well, you're right in the right, guys. You're in the right field. Just donate your time and help the town as much as you possibly can. Yeah. I'm sorry, we don't. None of our open space people are here. They were all tied up tonight for some reason. Oh, I should that. But uh, yes, we. Uh, from my standpoint, I welcome you on because we. Thank you. We have a lot to do in this town. We have a lot of nice open space. We do. And yeah. more is coming. Need people who can take take an interest in it, and keep it going. I've walked a lot of the open uh, the spaces and the parks that you guys have, and I'm very impressed with it. But that's what inspired me to uh, get involved in the open space. It, it, it's town really has some beautiful areas. It does. Really beautiful areas. Yeah. You know, when tidal zones, that you don't get anywhere else. Freshwater tidal zones. Some of the best in the state. It's a beautiful town. I'd like to get involved. I'd like to have the board. Thank you. Well, thank you. And as you probably already know, Mary is, is kind of our point person here at Town Hall. She she takes care of between us, open space, selectmen, so anyone kind of fill, goes right through her. So oh, she's uh, very good uh, to get that talk to her two or three different times, and uh, I know you're on the ball. Yeah. I think Mary going to make sure the rest of the open space people get in and we'll set something up and try to get all the action. We appreciate having you aboard. Appreciate you getting involved. Yeah, well, we're going to ask. Yep, I I move that we. You know, I don't know. What, what's my correct terminology here that I wanted to use? Yeah, we appoint him. We appoint him. All right, yes, I move that we appoint him into the uh, Open Space Committee. A second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, approve the vacancy or to approve James Gallagher for a candidate on the Open Space Committee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Welcome aboard, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure. Awesome. While we're talking about open space, I think, well, maybe not. We do now have possession of 160 Barker Street. All right. Connected trail. Which is our newest open space. Connected trail, too. Oh, yeah. It's a nice area, too. So it's okay for us to go there? We can go there. It's all right. We can go there. We we had the Dave from what's the name of the Bellino Bellino landscape, Lino, Lino landscape no. on 53 has come up uh, 
out and trimmed a couple of the lilac bushes that were hiding the front of it. He's mowed a lot of the trail, rough mowed the trails. He cut some of the uh, fallen trees on the trails farther in and up so we can get in out and around. And uh, we've got more that is going to be done. He just did that quick right after we well, were able to take possession. We, I have talked with the town administrator and before we do very much down there, I've suggested that the town administrator selecting this board have a head meeting and set up our ground rules of who's responsible for what, where, when, and also we don't start stepping on each other's toes right at the beginning. Absolutely. Correct. And so it's standing that way. They, uh, the administrator has agreed that. I don't know if he's taken it any further, but they've had a couple of busy weeks there. So. But yes, the property can be walked on now. <laughs> Thank you. Shackleton regarding wild parsnip removal. He wouldn't be downstairs, would he? Wait. I don't know. Is he here, Rick? I'm going to call. I haven't done I was busy all day. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. That's all the slow. Can I ask about one of those bills that were signed in there? I just was wondering what the, the herbicide and pesticide, um, what was that for? It doesn't seem like something we should be using anyway. I was just wondering why. Well, Scott picked it up for some of the open space stuff that was yeah, around. It doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean it's going well, past it. This is for, well, I mean, for whatever it's for, it's bad to use that. So why are we using it? How much of it was acquired? One's 640 ounce, and one was one quart. And they're um, in a concentrated state, or they need to be diluted out, or what? Is that like just probably concentrated? We have to ask Scott, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Oh. Can we put that on the next agenda to, to discuss what we're using that for? I think it should be you know, open what we use it for. And, Go by all standards and licensing codes, you know, which is regular practices of safeguarding such things, uh, licensing, lending, insurance, and all that falls in the town, or where does that liability come in? Just curious. I don't know what, what it was used on or where it was used at. Yeah. We'll find out on the next one, no? Yeah, absolutely. And we have five minutes to odd. Uh, did you need five minutes? Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's what I wanted to do. I'd ask that you have five minutes on the audience and stuff you wanted to show, so this is sure we can do that while we have five minutes until we start the meeting very discussion on the uh, rope swing. Okay, the, um, the herring run behind my house, not the herring run, the, uh, the, the dam, um, it leads into Furnace Pond. Um, the water drops significantly there, as you might expect. Um, it seems to me like it's dropped more than the other ponds around. I don't know, it could just be... Um, I have sort of an unofficial um, measuring stick down there, and I, I was planning to get pictures um, on a regular basis, but I haven't gotten them regularly. But it's gone down into be and I think it was uh, July that I started doing this. It was at nine inches, just at the number is just in a random place. And now um, today, it's gone much further. It's down to, uh, to almost three. So we've lost six inches of water there in the past couple of months. 
Um, well, that's that's what this reads. Is that off the dam right out there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I took some pictures if anyone wants to see my. I sent them to Mary. Um, we're we're pond is it? It's Cranberry Road. That's the back of Cronus Pond. It's the outflow. Okay. I've been monitoring it also, and uh, just today took a measurement of a water line, and in the last month and a half, we've lost two feet of water off of Cronus. My opinion on this issue is water coming in from Oldham is somewhat of a flow. Regular, you can see it's down, yeah. but in proportion to what's going in for the last month, there has been nothing going over the dam or through the fish ladder. The fish ladder is dry. As far as I know, by standards of that ladder, it's 300,000 gallons per day to operate it. That's three inches on the plate. So you've had that all the time? It is supposed to have that all the time. Um, I believe it's Big Sandy pulling the water from the aquifer through about 100 feet of water of land. If you go onto the road between the two ponds, Big Sandy and Furnace, and you take a measurement, you're gonna find a large drop, almost six feet, of okay. one pond to the other. One's 60 feet deep, one is supposedly 20, and then sedimented up to eight. Those springs are already clogged up in that. It's man-made to begin with. And I personally, unofficially, of course, I'm not I'm, you know, an educated person in this, but it's common sense if you have a 60-foot pond, 100 feet of dirt between it, and you over pull a pond, you're going to have hydraulic movement and you're going to lose the aquifer. I believe that was happening. I've studied it and looked at it since my herring important and conservation. I've been looking at it and looking at it, and I think it's a no-brainer where the water's going. Brockton's not taking it. Uh, they've been very cooperative. And it uh, seems to me that there's water flowing in and nothing flowing up. And evaporation doesn't cover that type of loss. It's unofficial, of course. So right. the path, the path that is my opinion. Are all sanded up, you think? Um, the pond is layered with multiple sediment and leaves. It's a shingling effect in sediments. It is man made. It's an iron mine, basically, open mining. And it is spring fed, but it's also spring fed through a brook from Oldham. It's the passage. Right now, I'd be lucky to get a turtle through there under my fish. So my concern is the migration and exiting of the herring um, and then conservation of resources. And I, I think there's, there should be studies and find out where the water is going because it's not evaporating, it's not going into thin air. My opinion is that it's being drafted by a 60 foot deep pond next to it, less than 100 feet of dirt. And you can just, see where the water goes You through. can see the iron plume going into Big Sandy from the air. It's, that's my opinion. But it's worth I don't know the place on that. It's in cooperation well, somehow. What I'd like to say is this you finding the same thing that was found out 20 years ago and yep. 40 years ago. Yeah. When things get dry, it's, you're leaching through the sand, Mother Nature put it, just going backwards from what it, it was set up before. Yep. Uh, what can they do about that? The, next, the real the problem is, what can you do about it? And uh, we can try. We've, they've tried, the town has tried before. Uh, what if we put in a line of wells on our side of the property and pump enough water up to have at least 300,000 gallons of water flowing out of that pond for the fish like it's supposed well, to be? Well, first of all, you'd have to put the wells in. And you're going to have to get state right. approval well, no, to know. pump that kind of water, yeah. and they're not going to give you the approval to pump that kind of water if, it, if it's taking it out of somebody else's reservoir. I mean, you could try it all. Well, no, that's just, fine, but that's, yeah. that's the, right. you know, but they have, they ago, have some, we'll some permits, no. as Brockton does, that are very hard for us country folks to break. We've yep, tried, absolutely. we've tried, we've tried, we're trying all the time. But, uh, you know, you're, you're dealing with uh, environmental plots, especially if you're talking about trying to pump any water. If you're I, trying yeah, to I'm pump any water, you're, already, you're really jumping onto a, oh, yeah. to a wagon that's hard to, 
I have to hold on to it because I don't know how to build all that. There's no groundwork for any of this stuff. Um, my point is that I'm making obviously that I think we know where the water's going, and no. I don't think there's a easy solution. But I think it's going to get worse, not better. I don't see any long-term changes in development or regulations of a lot of water use. Um, the other thing would be to try and encourage granite reservoirs that have been already done, like try to get these surrounding towns to produce some water of their own. I think long-term that's, that's yeah. another one going to take a long You've got the right time. solution, but to get it done is yeah. a that's my point. There's a lot of things in down in the dam area. There's this, um, I don't know what it's called. That's call invasive uh, European uh, water willow. This is grown up. It used to be just in the little corner when I was a kid. Now it's taken over the whole thing. It blocks the fish from coming yeah. up there. It might be a good idea to try to get that cleaned out the next time we... Uh, I think it would be a great idea if we removed a lot of it by hand. Uh, with a big, long, 20-foot long rake and fork with ropes on it. You can't it. cut it because it'll run it, back to... It over. floats. It's, it's actually a floating type of problem. Um, I've only seen one area that it actually worked at the back of No Bottom Pond. It makes land for the actual native plants to take back over and they shade it out and take over. It's the only place I've seen it do something that enhanced the natural environment. Building land and, and habitat. But, uh, turtles love it. Um, it's it's a real problem, I think. The dredge. That and the lily pads, it's the whole place is clogged up down there. Yeah. Especially with there not being much water. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really narrow to begin with. It is beyond shallow at this point. It, it's almost non existent. And I, I don't think you could do anything but mechanically remove that. And then again, permits and how to do that other than hand work. I don't know what that entails. We did it by hand and that was okay. Does it Plymouth County has some kind of machine they can do something that could we uh, it still it still needs permitting right well, yeah. we do it by right. hand or with a machine. Well unless anything else. It's all unless it's put building its way right into a ladder of fish and they're coming up and you have to do something immediately. We've managed on. to clean out some of that. If, if the fish are running up and it's clogging the ladder, it has to be removed immediately. But they come up and they have to turn a corner right away. Yeah, that stuff's in it. Yeah, we took, we, we took tight about tight. ten feet of it out and I literally watched you know, Olympic herring, they're not all Olympians, but I watched one come up, you know, repeatedly, different herring coming up, and they were fishtailing five feet out of the water, hitting the water and, and like, just motorboating. And we didn't take that out, we would have had thousands of fish stuck in it. You know, well, literally, and so. You, you know, you have more ability to, to clean some of that area up than, yeah. That we have. Right, I exactly. Mean, you have, a, you have a, 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 an inside thing to do it. Yeah. But if it gets into any of the big projects, no bigger than that, and it requires permit. And, and anything that's going to require permitting around that pond right now is going to get involved in the whole bowl that's going with it because they're working on the the dredging permitting and and all that it perhaps can all be included somehow and so we want to keep heading that way but we want to be careful that we don't overstep our bounds and then have somebody else coming yeah. coming back at us i mean i think uh what needs to be done is a plan i think art has the right idea it is very invasive as you know, it's just not a good thing. It's going to have the whole pond filled and, up. Well, it's going to stop the fish. The first thing that it impedes is obviously the ladder. It's on the right-hand side. And it's coming in from both sides. And last year, if we hadn't removed it, we would have had thousands of fish stuck in. And it can move around with ice. It, it basically a floating mat that can get moved. And so it's very unpredictable on what it will do as far as breaking away and, and multiplying. When you do mess with it and cut it or pull it out, as you know, it, it encourages growth <laughs> when you prune something. Yep. So that's my take on it. I think we need a long-term 
short term plan is I think it is an impediment to the fish that's a, a standing impediment just waiting all the time. It's, it's not a healthy thing to have there. So I think Art has the right idea. It needs to be addressed and whatever permits, then if that's what it's going to be, we start the ball rolling. That's my motion that I would say my, at the same time my statement on it. And the sooner the better. Okay. How do we go about that? Well, Mr. Chair, can I say something? Yes, sir. Now to the yard to the seat. Those of you that don't know me, my name is Bill Bolter, but I'm also on the fisheries as a, as a uh, alternate. And I work, I've been working um, quite a bit with the Division of Marine Fisheries. I've actually addressed this with the head of the Division of Marine, Marine Fisheries, uh, Brad Chase, who, who was in charge of this whole area. Um, he, he's well aware of that um, situation down there. We actually asked the watershed if they could include that because that area down there, because they don't even consider that part of Furnace Pond. They, they consider it a different pond in there. And so um, I had mentioned to them that, well, it's the same pond water, it's the same place at the Heron Go and all that, but it's all we would like to do is at least have a passageway for the fish to make it so that it's easier for them to come and go. Um, I know that he's looking into it. You know, whether the division has to get all the permits or, or what the story is on that, I know it's, it's um, we have brought that to their attention. So um, it's something that I would think would be worked on in the future. Okay. I think Mr. Bolton was, is 100% correct with all of it he said, and that's really where this needs to be addressed is that that kind of a level. I mean, we can we can help that level, but with, that's the level up there. And marine fisheries, the bridging all of that project. It's you know we can lend our support. We should be lending our support, but it's not really something that we can tackle without all of their input and their expertise. They they know how to get these things done where we can spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Is there an official plot anywhere that shows that it's actually part of furnace or is it just being... Uh, no, it's actually it's called uh, Gore Mill. Oh, Gore Mill. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's called a different one, but it's actually the same water. It's the same, right. you know, it's the same area, but uh, just call it something different. That's so good. when they did, did do all the treating on uh, furnace water, they didn't treat that. And I went to the, uh, oh, no. the head of the Pembroke Watershed Association and said, we would really like it if you would consider that as part of Furnace One and, uh, and treat that. So they had to go back to the state and get permission also and permitted okay. to, to do that, even, even to treat the lily pads and all that. You have to get a special permit to do that. So, um, oh three or four years ago, Bill, Brockton was looking at cleaning that whole area. They had, a, and I happened to be there one one day when there was a group of them there with uh, Brooks Monroe, I believe, was there. In other words, there was a group, of, and that was their reasoning for there is to clean out that area because Brockton needed it to take, to take water. But uh, I don't know what happened afterwards because I never saw any cleaning done but uh you know what the sad part about this whole thing is that um the uh, fisheries commission has been saving water as much as we possibly can you know, we've, been, we've been watching the gates very closely to conserve water as much as we can and we conserve it and we actually put in new boards last year to raise the water levels of where it was supposed to be and they just end up taking more water yep and it's like somehow or other there's going to be a stop to this. Last Monday night we had um, Josh Cutler come in and talk to the selectmen um, about this and, and all of the selectmen on board with watching the water issues in Pembroke. We, we have some problems and, uh, and they're trying to address them both through the, uh, the state and, um, and the federal as far as how much they can take and when they take it. It's, um, Whenever the law was made 15 years ago, they made it when there was a lot of fish 
and people really didn't care too much about that because it was just thousands and thousands of them all over the place, and now we're trying to bring them back or help bring them back. And um, they're diverting water during migration periods, and they, they really shouldn't be doing that. Right. Um, although they've been working with the fisheries, brought them water, has been working with the fisheries about when we tell them that there's juveniles going downstream into Silver Lake and there's other problems that we have, and they, they have stopped diverting for us, you know, for a period of time. So they have been working with us, but it just seems um, we get down there and work like crazy, cleaning up the streams and putting all of these things up and saving all the water, and then they just take more because they have more. <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm with time news here. Is there any effort to measure the levels of all the body, water bodies in town? I mean, Mr. Edgerton has put in an impromptu measuring stick at his site. But how about the other ponds? Is anyone measuring this? Or is it, oh, we're just going on ad hoc? Well, the, the, the actually, uh, there is a measuring device that is inside of the building that Brockton has. And that's what they go by. But we don't know whether that's true. That's right. So the last meeting of um, the uh, Central Plumber County Water District uh, meeting I had brought up, they received $50,000 and I asked them if some of that $50,000 could be spent on engineering to let Pembroke know where that water level is and if they could put something electronic in there to let us know. So we just to gather some actual facts. Yeah, actually, yeah, some facts. So currently, right now, we just have word of what the level is. So we don't have anything that says that, that we can watch it either up or down. Well, this seems to be a real need for each water body in town to be measured, yes. which isn't being done right now. Um, if I may, okay. um, in Weymouth, they have little buoys that. Um, you can tell if somebody's wading in the pool or not by the ripples or if it's an otter and the level and the flow. And uh, I think that would be something we should address is knowing the bodies of water and a long-term study on the levels of the ponds. We don't really have, as Bill said, a day term or any real solid information. And I don't think it's up to others. I think we'd be smart to watch the hen house ourselves and to start a study long term on the water levels of these ponds. I think that's not going to happen overnight, but we need to address it. And the technology is there. It's minimal technology today. And it can give you the real time levels. And uh, you could draw a parable between, uh, say, the drawing of water. If we knew what they were drawing out of Big Sandy and what relationship that has long term to the levels of ponds around it. If any, I think until we have hard facts and you know, not we need we need to have facts and we need to address the issue because we don't there's not going to be any water for anybody never mind the fish. You know, that's what I have to say. Technology is there. We need to address this issue. Okay. Anything further on that? Are you five minutes? Yeah, I know we're a little over that. Yeah. Welcome. Um, is that something we need to address? How can we go about addressing this or going further with that? Just need to go DEP, BMF, somebody going to contact them, have them come out, look at it, and see? Uh, is, is, there, is there grant money available? Is you know We don't know, because we never, I don't think, addressed it with the new technologies yet. I know okay. Weymouth has. Well, we did, Pembroke did ask Central Pullman County Water Commission is if they would use some of that fifty thousand dollar grant money that they got yeah. to assist Pembroke into uh, finding out what the data was, hire an engineer to do that. Yep. They come up and say this is the amount you have to go by. Now whether that's going to be enough money there to put a small buoy in there that yep. goes into the water department or conservation or something to say. This is what our water level is, and this is how we're going to monitor it all the time. But it's so we know when it's going up and when it's going down. But yep. I think the legislators really need to help us on this too, because there's a lot of legislative things that I mean, it gives us the right to do that. And uh, although they've been working with us on it, there's nothing to say that they just can't take it whenever they want. Yeah. So 
and, and what we did offer would be full. I, I just thought that was kind of funny that Salt Lake was full. They couldn't take a little more water from us. An abundant source that we put planks in for them, we did offer it up. We had to divert the water and it, it trapped air. It didn't work out. So again, we need to study upgrades and I, I really think long term, these buoys can't be that expensive. A five dollar cell phone basically does the same thing. So I don't think they can be that expensive and um I would like to know with the next meetings that I go to uh, be more than glad to I, I haven't seen the furnace pond so low, and I live on the lake. And yeah. I mean, it's, I just keep moving my boat further out into the water, further out into the water. It's, it's, uh, it, the pond's disappearing. Getting to the point of some ponds are going to have a no use. Right. I mean, it's really getting close to that. I, I think, again, it's, it's we need a plan, and again, we need cohesiveness between the boards, especially on this. It's, it's more important than just us at this moment. This is a long-term situation where I don't think we even own the water rights in this town. It's either federal and state control. The legislation is what's necessary. I, I absolutely agree with Bill. One of, one of the things that might have a minor effect on Ferris Pond is that since Andrew has stopped harvesting or working the corner bog on Maquam, they aren't taking any of that Indian head water that used to come down through and into into furnace. Right. You know, so it's we're not getting it all of the water that used to be what, down there. What happened to those rights? Well, what they goes gone. on with them? I think they're gone. Um, is there any way to address not just thinking, but are they gone? And could they be retrieved? Oh, uh, that is McLaughlin, the I think, is, is, is it McLaughlin? I have to on up in the Old Pines that works for DEP, Jim McLaughlin, who has been water right, the water rights expert for the last 10 or 15 years that I know of. I don't know if he's still doing it with DEP, but that was his, one of his jobs was keeping water with our rights up to date. Um, In other words, he was the one that came and said, okay, you didn't file the issue. We need the $500 for filing fee. And all it did was create a washout and it took its course anyways. Uh, and it's not controlled when it does that instead of controlling it. So I think that might be an issue we we should address so we know one way or the other whether we have rights to that water. Can we use it or not? Can we put this on the agenda to, to, to find out because we have all the other residents that we're up here waiting. Yeah. Um, not not to cut anybody oh, off. No, it's a very important thing. No, it is. Um, and so are I'd like to find out, you know, how what are the next steps in order to do where we have to go and then go from there. But I think it's something we should probably put an action plan together first right. and then and then try to pursue it. I just you know, I'm sure we can we all agree. Um, I just want we have other people waiting out in the hallway that we would need to be courteous oh, with. Yeah, please go. Thank you and thank you so I agree with putting it on a uh for the yeah. gender. Yeah, abs thank you. absolutely thank you. absolutely thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can we move to continue in a second on that? Yes. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, there's a motion to, to continue uh, the Michael Shackleton, the pot while yeah, If we could uh, just look that up, that's what we want. If you speak with him, just let us know when, and we'll, uh, we'll probably schedule it tentatively for the next one. And unless something comes up, just let us know. We'll just keep going on the line. Gotcha. Oh, on the first step, real quick. Zero. 
Welcome, everyone. Just, just thank you for your uh, patience while we discussed uh, some other items that we had going on. But um, this is the um, discussion on the rope swing on uh, Brick Kiln Lane that has uh, become a hindrance to the residents. Has everybody seen all the re uh, all of us seen this? Read it? No? Okay. Well, I'm Andy Stevenson, the chair here. Who's uh, who's up first? Kevin, you're the closest. The floor is yours, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife and I, uh, Kevin Biggs, hey, Kevin. Stephanie Whiting and I, live at 150 Bridge Lane, so we're the last house on the road. And uh, we come and go past the parking area, uh, which the kids have been using every day. It seems like this summer there's been more traffic every year. It's been more traffic, as the uh, letter mentioned. Uh, we see a uh, litter that's left up on the parking area, and of course we uh, see people coming and going. But the problems that other people have had on the road are basically with the traffic and then uh, with the tremendous amount of litter that's left behind. We keep picking it up and they keep putting it back, uh, just making a mess again. Uh, and the other issue, of course, is the uh, fact that the swing itself doesn't look to be safe these days and that's a real concern. Uh, we try to talk to amongst ourselves and to uh, the police department and uh, select them now and we've been here once before and again it's just gotten worse every year it seems like word spreads and now we're getting kids from all over and uh, when we were gathering the signatures for the letter over the weekend we heard I heard uh, the same story of uh, problems with cars going too fast, uh, near collisions, that sort of thing. And people weren't were just offering that on their own. But the uh, first thing they said is, oh yeah, the car is going way too fast on this little road, and that's been a concern all summer long. So uh, hoping that everyone can uh, come to some agreement on what would be the solution here to uh, make this a thing of the past. Do you have any ideas what the solution might be? Well, we, uh, I, as I think we said in the letter, we uh, the ropes have been taken off of there, and that has not uh, solved the problem. The ropes have gone right back up, uh, and at this point, as long as a tree is there, I think we're going to continue to attract kids from this wide area, which is the problem. That is overpowering our small road and conservation land doing a, a real number on, on that it's a challenge we just take care of the parking area and the road that uh, the kids use to get down to the path where they head down up to the rope swing and we don't go into the woods on a regular basis and that area is just about as bad as it's ever been uh, the kids have actually taken a couple of bags of cans but they leave so much behind and then and that finds its way into the river and the whole area is suffering because of the amount of traffic and the kind of traffic that it is this year especially. I think other people have a lot of the same experiences but they certainly could add the basic uh, situation. So the goal would be to have this one tree eliminated? I think that's what needs to happen. And that's going to stop the parties from happening down there? Sorry? That's going to stop the parties, you think, by taking the tree out? I think that's going to eliminate the attraction that's drawing kids from all over. Uh, I think that's what they're going down there for because they come at high tide. They're, there aren't cars there if the tide isn't right. So uh, this tree is certainly what is bringing the kids in to party, to swing, to have a great time. They certainly are having a great time. But leaving us with the consequences. Uh, I visited the site in the last six days three times, and I would agree with you. Um, I don't think that tree is the problem. I, I think it's the tree with the stand on it. I think if you eliminated the tree with the stand, in my opinion, you would eliminate like 90% of the drop, and it would return to a local kind of environment. 
that's just my observation. I'm not a professional in it, but I, I agree with you about trash. Um, I saw a slight effort to clean it up after a little discussion. It takes more than a slight effort. I think uh, obviously any tree that can be removed is a larger project that we can address ourselves legally. I don't think that's something we can actually rule on personally. It's a lot of other organizations involved in control of that area. So and the North River Commission has to be part of a decision there, is that yeah, right? I'm, I'm not privy to all of the actual people that have to be involved. Um, the new, new member. Um, but I have done my homework and I think where it's a tidal situation and a timing situation, I think enforcement would be your key in traffic control and I do agree it's probably very dangerous at times. I agree with you. It's very narrow road, it's twisty, and I agree with you. I think enforcement uh, would be, since it's a time issue and you can know when these um, groups are coming in and out from out of town, I think enforcement, and uh, it, especially where it's a time zone, start writing tickets. You know? Do, do the police have a right ticket for the people that park in the, the area beyond? I can speak to that. Uh, well, first off, the um, area in question is several hundred yards off the road. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a sufficient number to be able to patrol that yeah. on a regular basis, especially with a tie chart to figure out when it's going to go. Yeah. My concern is that trying to regulate it with signs, and that's not working. We have, uh, when, when the guys write pocket tickets up there, the cars are from Rockland, Whitman, Kingston, Marshfield, everywhere but Pembroke. So yeah, it's not yeah. our kids that are going out there. And I'm concerned about the liability. It's a dangerous situation. They've built now three tiers yeah. on that tree. Five. Um, five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost count. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of time before somebody gets hurt out there. Seriously. And, and as a governing body and as the people that own this property, we have to do something to, uh, to, to mitigate that problem. So we've been out there. Uh, I have uh, 11 calls that we've gone out there so far that this summer that's, we've logged in. And I have my guys patrolling on a regular basis when we can. But again, we can patrol the street, but to get out of the car, go all the way down to where the uh, kids actually are. And again, some of the kids come up by boat. And swim. And we don't have any control over that. But uh, I am concerned that there's a, a safety hazard here. You, you have alcohol, you have open fires in, in a woods where in a drought period. And, and again, the, the commonality between this is the draw, is the swing. And I'm not sure that the town needs to provide a swing. Um, it's, it's, I don't think it's original equipment to the conservation area. So um, I support these people because, you know, it's a quality of life issue that they have to live with every single day throughout the, throughout the summer. Uh, it's concerning enough that a dozen of them show up tonight and that's all there is on the street, yeah. but it's every one of them. And we'd like to be able to help them, and they call us, we're, but we're the last resort. So I'm hoping that we can come up with a plan tonight or in the near future to help that out. Uh, some of the other ideas that we talked about was uh, possibly a CPA grant to put some um, guardrails, wooden guardrails, natural wooden guardrails in some of the areas where cars are pulling off into the woods into the uh, destroying the vegetation to park to kind of channelize the parking into the one area that's designated and then you know using the canoe ramp for canoes the way it's supposed to be used yeah. instead of uh, drinking beer and right. you know rope swing I, I was surprised the actual um, canoe place the trash probably was empty it was clean mm -hmm. well maintained and, and respected and uh, it's, the enforcement to get in there it, it's just so it's a go trail, basically, up and down around, and it's got a lot of blockage and some walls and down trees. So I'd, I'd be more than glad you if know, you could it, talk advisory board into hiring a few more cops to go out there and patrol it all yeah. summer. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Other than that, I, I think we could probably come up with a solution. I would say try the, to me, what looked to really be the draw. The, mo the main draw was the tower that they jump off of. We'll take out the tower and you mitigate the situation, I think, drastically. <laughs> I'm not a professional. Well, however you want to do it. I, I just think if I was to choose 
losing a rope swing and a great place for people to go and have a good experience and hop in the water. It's kind of traditional and it's American. And I saw no um, one beer when I was out there and that disappeared. I saw no uh, syringes or other paraphernalia that would say drugs. But I, I think the pictures I, I, oh, clearly I show that's I more think than one tower. beer. Oh yeah, no, no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's absolutely <coughs> alcohol dangerous. Yep. I still just not adamantly, but I really think you take down the tower tree, and that eliminates a lot of the draw. But isn't that the tree with the rope swing on it? No, that's the pine tree with all of the dangerous uh, scaffolding and top, you know platforms and enhancing the experience to a point where it's become like a, 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 a free ride for adrenaline junkies, basically. But the other issue there, too, is the issue of the traffic on the street. I agree. Because, because the way that the kids drive, I mean, one afternoon, two weeks ago on a Saturday, 30 cars went down that street in less than a couple of hours. And they drive very fast. I agree. One afternoon, somebody backed up going 35 miles an hour up the whole street. If you say something to them, they yell at you. Um, you know, I mean, I've been on the street for 30 years, and I, and I really find it very offensive. I can't walk on the street. Our neighbors have two small kids. She can't walk her kids yep. on the street. We have elderly people who live on the street. I mean, other people come. They have runners who come down the street. They don't come anymore because you I, take your life in your hands. It and is. these kids have no respect for anything. Can I say something? I've seen people on the roofs of cars yeah. coming out, driving backwards, driving yeah. forward. Oops. I'll disagree a little bit about the timing with the tides. At 5.30 to 6 today, I was outside my house. I counted eight cars mm -hmm. with them. Now, that's not a lot of cars, but it was dead low yeah, tide. Yeah, what were those kids doing down there yeah, at dead low tide? 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock yes. at night, that's how late they right. are there. And then when they leave, it's honk the horns, it's make all the noise you want. It's, it's crazy. When they're, they're coming they're out, they're and they're speeding. Street. Everybody's got, yeah. their Everybody's got their car souped up. It sounds like a bunch of Mack trucks going mm -hmm. by at 11 o'clock at night when they're coming out of it. There are people who come down. Yeah. Sometimes there'll be a car that will go down, and then eight or nine more cars, and one car leaves. One car's only been there five or six minutes, and the others are there for a longer time. There's got to be other activity that's going on down there besides people that want to swim. And oh, um, you can't jump off of that oh. at low tide. No, you can't. So there's, there's other things going on. Kevin's found girls' bathing suits down there, uh, all kinds of things. They've made comments to my wife when she's out gardening out yeah, front. I think that's they go totally by. inappropriate. And it's like, am I going to challenge these people and then have my barn burn down? It, it's, uh, you know, I try to just raise my hand when they go by, and that's it. Um, and I think it's kind of an extended graduation party for people who I found were going through that transition and they don't really have stewardship of the property at all. I mean, that's that's a given. I still think it, it's a great place. It's a wonderful place and the rope swing, I think, alone is a rope swing. You have the tower and you start like, where does it stop? Two, three, four, five? How far do you go up? Or somebody gets the neck broken. Yeah. Uh, so it's well, agreed. I agree with all of these safety issues. If somebody gets hurt, yeah. everybody else, if they're high or drunk or whatever, they're going to flee. Yeah. And there's going to be a body out there well, actually, that somebody's going to find the next morning. I asked a couple of kids, uh, you know, in that case, what would you do? And one kid was uh, entering the military. He was very step forward and, uh, you know, sit the life guard. And he was, I think there's all different zones of people that that's the problem. It's not local. It's like you said, I asked 15 kids, how many from Pembroke? Two. Uh, the majority were from Hingham. I asked, why don't you do this in Hingham? Well, the police are jerks. And I toned it down. And I said, well, we're about to be jerks here because it's just out of hand. And I, I put that message out there and a few cans got picked up and I, I don't know what the solution is long term. But I think short term, the real danger is the tower tree. If I would do anything, I'd get that out of there as soon as you can, with whatever grace you can. I, I have another thing, one quick thing. I've seen mothers, middle-aged mothers, drive down there 
and drop off their daughters. Mm -hmm. Four or five girls. Yeah. And their mothers are gone. Yeah. yeah. People have way too much they, confidence they, they in their cell phones. They just think that it's just a fun place. and well, It is. It is all that. And it, it should be just that. It shouldn't be a gathering place for a bunch of out-of-town kids to come and pop beers. Uh, the good thing to topography of it is that uh, you can judge by the rope they have at the bottom stopping from going downhill. It is rather a very steep area and I don't think large gatherings of drunks would last five minutes there standing up. So I think that probably is further up the street uh, with a big fire pit on the top of the hill. And I didn't see a lot of trash around there, but it seems to be locally right at the site. And uh, it was, it was like a beer can bomb went off. Well, the fire pit alone is dangerous to all the neighbors. I agree. The fire trucks couldn't even get in there with their hoses. Yep. So we have worked all our lives for what we have. And these kids aren't even from the same town come down and put everything we have at risk with this fire pit and their behavior and the drinking. There were no signs on the street either that says no swimming, um, danger with rope swing. These mothers are dropping off their kids. Think very likely think there were life threats there. Yeah, I, I've heard other mothers in other towns just talking about this fun place. <laughs> it's, it's on social media. It's, it's I on agree. Social work. That's what that sounds. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. What's the town going to do when a kid falls out of that tree putting that rope up? Or hits the rocks from that rope swing? You guys are, the town's liable for that. You, pay for you know about it. Life. You know it's dangerous. I had a friend in high school that fell off one of those exact rope swings. Landed in the edge of the water. Broke his back, was paralyzed from the chest down, and died when he was 30 years old. The town's going to pay somebody for their whole life for that. And somebody's going to die from something out there. That's a dangerous, dangerous situation. And that doesn't even take any... I've lived on the street for 36 years. There's never been traffic on the street like this. Right. Not with the canoe ramp, not with the hunters, not with anybody else on the road. Not since the street swing went up. My parents lived in Back Hill. Black Hill had a rope swing down in Fox Hill, down in the Fox Hill shipyard, down by the river. They took it down because they had traffic, they had beer cans, they had kids partying down there, and the kids swinging into the river. They took it down. This isn't going to happen. This isn't going to go away until the rope swing goes away. And if the tree platform isn't going to do anything for anybody if they don't have the rope swing to swing on, the rope swing is the attraction. They use the platform to use to get higher up yeah, on the I rope. I think it's a thrill. I think it's like a thrill ride. Oh, it is. And it's a yeah. junkie but it's the rope. Ride. It's the swing. It's not oh. the tree they're jumping off of. I think it's the people. Rick, we're going to go around and listen to yeah. everybody else. Okay. Just gentlemen. Let's uh, say I'm the uh, rope representative of the North River Commission, so I'm one of the commissioners from the North River. Um, the rope swing is, is definitely illegal. It should not be there. There is no permit, as far as I know, from the North River Commission that uh, authorizes that. There is, there is no permit for any fire to get there. I know people that live there that have millions of dollar homes that are there that we can I having um, a fire pit, you know, to, to be put down near the river. So everything that's happening down there is totally illegal. It should not be there, according to the North River Commission. Um, I'm not here representing the North River Commission tonight. I have not been asked to do that, but I am a commissioner that represents Pembroke. And I would say that that has to go. Uh, either the tree, trees, or whatever, that area has to go, and it needs some enforcement to remove those kids out of there. This is not, it's, it's crazy. The chief is right. Somebody's going to get seriously hurt down there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's 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 great to see the kids swing and go in the water and do flips and all that stuff. But somebody's going to get hurt, and and the people uh, that live along the river have paid a lot of money for those homes to live there in peace and tranquility because they want that river protection. And these kids are not authorized to do what they're doing. There. So um, at our next meeting, I can bring that up to the commission and. Uh, we can put a cease and desist on you know, that whole thing in there. So, uh, so I can bring that up at the next meeting. So. 
Thank you. That's very important. What is your next meeting? It's considered an attractive nuisance. And if there was an attractive nuisance in the middle of Pembroke Center with hundreds of kids gathering, uh, underage drinking, using drugs, speeding around the common, you wouldn't put up with that for two days. It's because there are so few few of us that it's bothering that it, it's being ignored. And, and that's really unfortunate because so lives are being at risk. <clears throat> and the town does not have a leg to stand on when a person gets hurt down there. Not because of the complaints that have been issued, the warnings, the fact that there's no signage, and everything there now that you pointed out is illegal. The town will be sued an immense amount of money. I'm guessing emergency vehicles will have a very difficult time getting down that way also, Chief? The only vehicle that's going to get down there is a boat. Okay. Yep. When, when the traffic's like that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Uh, my name is Caleb Estrex. I do live in Hanover, but I spend a lot of time on the river. Um, I was there on Sunday, and I hadn't been to that spot yet. And I had um, my sisters in town with their kids, and I had my kids with us, and uh, that would be fun to check it out. But it was it was horrifying how disgusting that is. And we've trained our kids to be stewards of the land to pick up that. And we naively brought one trash bag and didn't make a dent filling it up. And it was you know, full of clothes and towels and, and luckily not that much broken glass, but lots and lots of beer cans and everything else. It was disgusting. Um, it would be nice to be able to appreciate that spot, but we can't. But when I was a kid, I grew up in Hanover. I grew up on the river. Um, the rope swing that's at Park Hill was, uh, that was that was there when I was a kid. That was the place I used to go up and play on the rope swing. Um, it, did bring a lot of kids there, and that was a problem. That was a little different. It wasn't public property. I think that's part of the neighborhood association. So they were able to actually keep people off that. This is a different problem. Um, maybe in public land, I guess. But uh, it took a while for that problem to go away. I remember they cut down the tree. I took down the ropes from a couple of towns, cut down the tree. The problem didn't go away. After the tree that was leaning way out the river was cut down, the kids found another tree that was not so much hanging over the river. And I remember that second tree because I was there. I showed up there, and there was a group of kids moping around because their, uh, this girl that was with them went off and let go in the wrong spot and broke her leg because, uh, because it got more and more dangerous. There was never really an accident before that problem. Until that time, that was the more dangerous tree. So that tree came down. Um, and, then, and then someone actually tied a rope between two <laughs> other trees with the rope swing hanging from that. And that one lasted for a little while. And then eventually that one was cut down. But the problem didn't go away with cutting down the tree. Not, not right away. It took, it took a while. So I think if the point is getting rid of the rope swing and the solution is cut down the tree, we're going to have to clear cut down. We have to take every tree that looks like a potential rope swing tree because it's got to come right back. Um, that is at least, you know, that's my, the history I know. So if you wanted to look back what happened in the past, that, that was it. It seemed like the quickest thing is probably first is to yeah, get the structure out of there. Get that. It's been done multiple times. Well, is that, that, that scaffolding yeah. been multiple taken down? Multiple times the ropes were taken down. Yeah. yeah. I know so the ropes were taken down. Yeah. 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 How, how many times was the last time that, I mean, that looks like a pretty good structure. That wasn't a, someone knocking that up there. A lot of that's gone up in the last few weeks. Yeah. The last few yeah. weeks. Yeah. There were two yeah. levels in February when I went to this spot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, they were industrious. They bring wood with them. And they yeah. Go, yeah. It doesn't, I don't even think it's possible to go off that rope swing really with the structure because you can't really reach the rope. Oh, well, they always do because um, the ropes are Yeah, you have to time. climb up the tree, yeah. do something extra crazy. Right. So it's no, they climb right. up on the bank and they swim from yeah. the bank, swim from the yeah. bank. Yeah. Yeah. Out yeah. over the bowl, yeah. someone else's shoulders yeah. and, and take off. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but it seems like part of the problem is the attraction getting down there, which is also the fire pit. And uh, I, I just, I, I think it should go away. You know, I'm not saying that it should stay. Um, I just don't know if going and cutting the tree down is going to be this immediate solution. There, there really aren't any other trees that are yeah. overhanging. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. it'll, uh, they're going to be industrious. I would, I would take a look at it again because yeah, I, mean, I saw the next one that looked like they were. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't, it it didn't just look just like one. Sense. But that, I guess that yeah. was just my experience last time. It didn't look like one actually after the one that Mark and Pino came down. And then that's when it got really dangerous. That's when they go broke her leg. And I remember being there that day. And it was, uh, you're right, someone's going to get hurt yeah. the way it is right now. It needs yeah. to be, something needs to be done. The thing is, it's going to go away September because all the kids are going to go to college. It's going to come back next year. Yeah, it's going to come right back. Yeah. So it's come back next year years. than it is this year. Yeah, yeah. In the last four or five years, yeah. it's come back yeah. 50% worse every year. Yeah, I'm sure. Where it is now, it's just. 
And I agree so with you. It needs a it needs a real a real solution. And it, hopefully, it's only going to be taking out a couple of trees to, to get rid of it at the most. But right. Yeah. But look at it too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, if that's yeah. it. But I still yeah. And yeah, my my name is Jane Esselbergs, and I'm also from Hanover. Um, we were there yesterday, and I was horrified at the at the felt. And the beer, and the beer cans were fresh. They were within a, uh, the past couple of days. Um, there were, I estimate, between 300 and 400 beer cans there. We could not possibly have picked them all up, and we tried. Um, so just today, I said, my husband and I took a ride down Brick Hill Lane. I was curious because I'd never been there by the road, and I didn't really know where it was. I couldn't imagine where all these kids were coming from. And on the way in, I looked. There was not one no littering sign. There was not one $500 fine for litter. There was not one sign that said anything to anybody about littering. And the, the, it's the litter that really bothers me. And, and, the, the, and, the, and the fact that the, the place is being overused and that these poor people, this, these brick hill neighbors, I, would, I feel so sorry for what they've been through. And these kids are coming from out of town. Absolutely. They've gotten the message that it's a, a lawless place to go and that there's no, you're, the cops aren't going to hassle you because nobody, is that, there's been, I mean, I haven't read anything in the paper about anybody being arrested. I would like to see the police come down there and get these kids and giving them the option of cleaning up all the litter or going to jail, get their parents involved, so especially if they're out of town kids. And maybe if something was in the paper, something was in the newspaper or on social media. I don't know how to find just social the media. It's on social media. Yeah. Yeah, well, that that is is the then the social media yep. ought, to, ought to start to say, geez, I, I got caught down at the, uh, the rope swing in Pembroke yesterday, and I was arrested, and my car was towed, and I had to pay a fine, and my parents are furious. That kind of social media may, will go a long way, but in the meantime, I don't understand how all this traffic can be coming down this now narrow, windy, private road, and no one's getting, there's no consequences for it. it uh, I, I'm just, uh, I'm appalled at the, at the mess and, and the suffering that these families have gone through. I also feel it would be a, a shame for all of the people that use that rope swing and enjoy it. I think of the teenagers in my neighborhood that um, appreciate the river. We've taught them to pick up after themselves. They've picked up that site a couple of times because they've been so horrified. And they've spoken with some of these kids. There was one kid from Texas. I mean, he was, how, how did you even find out about, oh, you know, someone, someone, so, so. it's not kids coming in from boats so much, like it used to be at Brick Hill, where it was a real problem. Um, people on boats, it would be a, a shame if they couldn't, you know, pull over and use the rope swing a little bit, um, but I have a feeling, and I've seen it happen so many times over the years, if that not that tree, then there'll be another tree or another tree. The problem is it's not being monitored, that there's the, the kids are getting away with it because they've found a place where they can go and they can drink without being hassled, and that's a big part of the problem. I if, uh, if somebody gets ticketed now, what's the fine? If, if they're ticketed for parking there, is it a warning? Is no, it a $50 we're, we're, we're ticket? We're writing parking citations, but again, we're limited on what to do. And again, I disagree that you let the kids go down there and then lock them up. That's not the problem. We want to we want to make sure that it's a safe place and people use it for what it's supposed to be. It's open space. It's not an amusement park. It's open it's space. So without the tree swing there, it's what it is in its natural state. It's woods and people can use it and do what they're supposed to do. They can enjoy the river. It doesn't come gifted with a rope swing and that rope swing isn't attracting to people to come down and, and reckless behavior and everything else and, and I can't have somebody there all the time. So we go down there, we try and monitor the best we can, but again, it's a situation that we have to take a better solution to fix it. We know that there's a problem and enforcement isn't going to be the answer. What we need to do is we need to correct the environment so that we don't have to do as much enforcement. Then we can take care of the littering. And truly, I don't think people need a sign to, to tell them that you shouldn't litter when they come down into the conservation area. I mean, that should be a, uh, 
because then we'll have signs everywhere. And, and try to avoid that. Now you don't have open space, you got signs. So the fact that we didn't have issues for years, we didn't even have no parking signs down there. We had very little conditions until recently. And again, it's out there on Facebook, it's out there on social media and everything else. This is the place to go. When the swing gets removed and the tree gets removed, it'll probably be out there that it's not the place to go. And again, we'll step up enforcement to the point where we, we already have uh, to, to what we can afford to do, but I don't think that's going to solve the problem. It's different kids on different days. So and, and until we get the message out to every kid that hears about this, we're not going to solve the problem again. That's why I'm here trying to try to try to get this thing on the right path and, and I don't see another solution for that and I'm not trying to tell kids they can't have a good time but I just think this is a dangerous situation that we're not going to correct. So I some action. P Pembroke Town News there saying you don't believe that in terms of the social media aspect of this which seems to be a driving force of this that a few arrests, a few five hundred dollar fines wouldn't deter it, wouldn't Cause some you, bad press you, on social you really media. Think that changing behavior after it's gone bad is the right way to handle it versus trying to correct it before bad behavior. I, I think it's embracing so, the, so the social media aspect of it. I, I, I don't think you let people fail in order to send a message to other people. I think you try and correct that beforehand. Again, I would rather go out and not find any speeders on the road than write a bunch of tickets and have a bunch of speeders on the road. It doesn't make sense to me. Let's try and correct this before somebody gets hurt or some or people do things that they shouldn't be doing. So let's fix it now. Let's not wait until they do something bad and then punish somebody to send out a message. I don't think that's good policing. I don't think that's uh, that's how we should be doing things. I've been doing the Rubus since 1972. I'm sorry. That's all right. And I voted on the river since that all those years. And there have always been kids on those rocks down there swimming and having a good time. It wasn't until this rope swing showed up five, six years ago that all of this madness started. The traffic, the beer cans, the trash, the trash talking, the obnoxious behavior. This is all coming the last five, six years, only since the rope swing has been here. This is social media. Yeah. Uh, we had a very similar problem in this town <coughs> at Tubbs Meadow from a long time. There was no rope swing, there was no place to swim. All it was was a congregation spot for young adults, shall we say. And we, it took a period of time between cooperation of the police department and and other organizations to finally convince the young adults that we weren't going to tolerate their drinking and leaving the rubbish and all that. And it's basically the exact same thing other than here you have a rope swing. If the rope swing isn't there, some of these people who have already been using this as their area to congregate are going to come and congregate because I can't believe that if there's as many people there as what we're told there is, that is enough time on that rope swing for them all to enjoy it. So most of them are sitting back and popping a can yeah. and socializing. Out of the river, we've seen them lined up there on that rope. And just oh, that's true. One but right they're, after another. They're, they're there also for the socialization and the, the drinking. And at that age, that's what they, they do. If you, you can take the rope swing down, but I don't believe you're going to correct your whole problem. I, well, think, I, I think if that was totally true, I don't think, I think we would have a problem in the fall and in the winter too. And we don't. Well, most of these young adults are, are at school, we hope. Well, on Saturdays and Sundays, but they're not there now. In the fall and in the spring, they're not there. It's, it's only after the swimming and they're out there using that that they're, that's when it becomes fall. Yes. Um, I'm at the very end and um, of Brooklyn Lane. And um, I think the, the, what we have to remember is what this gentleman said. It's illegal. The, the, the rope swing <coughs> has not been okay. It's illegal to have a rope swing. It, isn't that what you said, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, they are doing illegal behavior. 
And with us not doing anything about it, we're okaying that. And we know that it's a liability. We do. So we have two, in my report, in my opinion, two very major issues. One, the rope swing is illegal. And two, it's a severe liability for the town of Pembroke. And I am a conservationist. I'm a Green Party person. I don't want to take down trees. But if trees are um, causing kids to act illegally and cause all of this chaos in the neighborhood, then let's clean up, let's take the trees down, clean up the area, and then for us, form a neighborhood committee and help, help the police. Um, the police know my name because I call every time there's illegal parking. I've got to tell you something though. I haven't seen but maybe three or four illegally parked cars pass the sign. You know why? Because every time I call the police, the police go down. And I want to say thank you. And I always say thank you to the police. I go, the neighbors really appreciate you coming. They do not park illegally anymore because the police come. They park up where they're supposed to, and they park, and then they park on the side of the street. Not, it, I, I have had narrow like this to be able to get into by those cars, but they don't park illegally because they know the police are going to come down. And so, to me, we've got some legal issues going on, and we need to be responsible. So I, that's all I have to say. I believe me, this it's a I, it is a um, our life on Brick Hill Lane is really miserable. It really is miserable. But there's bigger issues than us being miserable. There's Ill illegal behavior going on and a huge liability. That's how I see it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and it's not just the same kids. I, can, I can't tell you how many times I've been in my front yard and a car full of kids has come by and said, is this where the rope swing is? Yeah. And I always say, well, they cut it down. <laughs> and half of those people leave, leave, but they find out it's still there. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, it's also but, you know, <laughs> once a week I can be out in the yard yeah. and somebody can stop and say, is this where the rope swing is? That's somebody that's heard about it on social media. They've never been there before. And these people are coming all the time. I, I agree with them that this is not about some local kids having some fun. This is, uh, like Chief said, I agree with them, it's become an amusement park and a thrill ride. And uh, to their benefit, I was there three times and a uh, police cruiser showed up. I was illegally parked. Pardon me, I was just looking at the situation. <laughs> they were very polite and they addressed the issues with the kids. They looked in their uh, bags with their permission and they did a good job. I mean, they were right there. So, I mean, uh, kudos to the Chief on that. They, the response was like within 20 minutes. How much red tape is it for the town to take that tree down? No idea. It's green tape. Two it's green tape. <laughs> Two <laughs> green tape trees. I mean, I, the North and South Rivers Watershed Association, we've obviously been hearing from the neighbors and hearing from uh, other people about this issue for some time now. And really, something has to be done. It's uh, a shame that that is happening public's land. Um, I know we all care about that. We all want to see that fixed. Um, I think you could potentially go and take down the trees. Uh, you could get through the North River Commission. I think you have enough arguments of uh, why you could do that. My concern is you still need enforcement. I think you're still going to need some serious repercussions for because now it's been found. 
uh, it is the place that you can go and have lawless behavior. And um, so I do think that there's going to have to be some enforcement by the police to be able to really truly stop the behavior from happening. Uh, downstream at the Marshfield Canoe Lodge, uh, we don't have a rope swing, but we have a little hidden place. Uh, they burn the kiosk that we put up with our math in it. You know, they burn the picnic tables. Um, and you know, the only thing that stops it is the police going in there and making it known to them that this is not a place for you to to behave this way. So I really feel strongly that you know, we need the police's help. And it sounds like they're doing what they can, but I don't know if there could be some concentrated effort that could then mobilize these kids to say, hey man, don't go over there. This is not a place to hang out with your buddies and drink anymore. Well, We're going to go well, back to hang out wherever it is that we came from and find, go to Wampachan. <laughs> once you lose that rope swing, I think that'll be a lot easier to do. The message will get out that it's not the place, the amount of people will be less. So the amount of patrol required to, to finish the job will be less. And we will certainly do that. Again, we depend on, on you know, you know the neighbors like Stephanie calling and saying, hey, the cars are down here. Um, because it is a hike in the woods for us to go down there. Again, I'm not saying that we don't go down, we do. Uh, but it's just one small section of town. And again, I think with, uh, you'll have less people down, it'll be easier to get the message out. And again, I, I really think it'll resonate on social media that the attraction go is, is right. gone. And, and then you get back to the people using it for the, for the purpose that it was used, the canoe ramp and, and, and the, the woods and, and the river itself, the, sh the natural outdoors. You know, the people at the Conservation Commission and at the North River Commission have to spend a lot of time talking to individual homeowners about why they can't cut down a tree. And so I would just want them to feel secure in their decision making because uh, next time somebody comes and they want to, they're going to have a reason why. Everybody's got a reason. So I just want you to think about how you know, this may be different from other things. It sounds like there's some <coughs> real public safety issues that I think uh, are happening here. Uh, I still want to see, I would really like to see the enforcement because I, I don't think just taking it down is going to be the only answer. Do you guys to hang up or on Facebook? Well, I live on the Weir River and hang up. <laughs> I don't want them there <laughs> You know, people find a place and then that's the hangout spot. And that's what's become the real issue. We've sent volunteers down there to, to clean up from, from Texas, actually, by the way. They weren't drinking, they were cleaning up. <laughs> I don't think it matters, quite frankly, where they're from. I think the problem is, is the behavior is wrong. And, and they need to be told that that's not the, that's not the, that's not the space for doing this. Um, it's a shame that we have to take down a tree because people are misbehaving so poorly. And, uh, I feel terrible for the neighbors. I feel really uh, disgusted when I see, just like you, the damage that's going on. And I do think that damage is kind of outweighing some of the concerns we've been, we might have about keeping the tree. I was not, I'm a tree hugger. <laughs> actually a paid tree hugger, so I, it's very hard for me to say, let's cut down a tree. Um, that tree provides shade to the river. Uh, it provides food to the fish that live in the river. So it, it does have value. I don't want us to think that this is a light decision to be that tree. Because, again, we talk to people at nausea about why they can't put take down a tree. Um, so I just want us to be very clear about why this might be the case in this and I hope it works, because I don't want to see that kind of behavior anymore than you do, but I do think we need the police. It's not, a, it's not an evil world. But if you take away you take away 80% of the draw that's there. I and 80% of the kids that go there are the probably using it legitimately <laughs> having fun. And the other 20% are the issues, you know, and that's where that expression, this is why we can't have nice things comes from. It's really Because 20% are ruining it for the mass, and you know what? Everybody's going to pay the price, so. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the same thing as in, in, in Park Hill with that old rope swing. Yeah. It didn't stop until, it's different because it was private property. Yes. So there's a lot more they could do to keep people off that. They had no right to be there. Yes. But it took serious enforcement, I know, before uh, before that went away, taking the tree down. But it, it didn't 
did with Olay. I was young once, 100,000 years ago. I know, <laughs> almost remember what it was like to run from figures chasing you in the woods. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it works. It still works to this day, I'm sure, yeah. Chief. <laughs> it's um, not that easy a place to get to, as I'm sure you found when yeah. you walked up there. Yeah. It's a go trip. Yeah. 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 Tree stumps and down yeah. Yeah. Stone walls and with tree stumps. Else. So it's a long way yeah, in. Yeah, I don't think it's just the attraction of going out there to hang out in the woods. Right, right. No, it, it, What's pulling them out there is that eighty percent of the drawer is taken away. Well, that sounds like that's where all the trash is right there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's all the way because they, yeah. the, the uh, fire pit is further in the river. I think they're doing it on purpose so that you can't, you can't really see it in the road. Yeah, you see the fire. The police well, officers well, in the town cannot spend. Eight oh, yeah, hours a day down here. Officer down here. He yeah. can't help the person. I mean, I live. We live next door to where, next door to conservation. We back up to the to the canoe ramp in our backyard, and we've never had this kind of a problem. But even when I I made Dale bring me in one day because I just couldn't believe whatever you know. I saw all the kids going. It's like what is in there? I don't get it. It takes ten minutes to walk in. So you don't see it from the road. I mean, you're on the road, but you've got to walk all that way in there. And the police officer in the town can't spend hours trekking through the woods. And that's why you know? the kids are there, because they know. Exactly. And our biggest fear, especially this year, is the fire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are no hydrants on the street. There's a brand new fire yeah. there. Yeah. We were there um, yeah. the other day. Yes, this week. Fire. Yeah. 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 The river is yeah. new yeah. this so week. It's, and it's, yeah. and it's yeah. not, yeah. And it's yeah. not yeah. even yeah. in an yeah. open field. It's in the understory. It's, it's in the woods. In this kind of, you know. We're okay. terrified. They're terrified. And right this minute, it's pitch black. Right. There's a group of kids there now. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. Yeah. Guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll they'll be there at ten thirty. Yeah, right? and it's I'm posted that it's dusk. They're yeah. dusk and to leave. Yeah. I think again the chief is right, it's become a carnal act show. Oh absolutely. It's off the hook. And the new fire pit is definitely concerning because it's on the bottom of the hill. Okay. Bill, when is the next meeting of the North North River Commission? Uh, we have the third Thursday of every month. Uh, I'm not doing that math. I've been up since four o'clock this morning. <laughs> That's next Thursday, I think. I think it's next Thursday. Yeah. Okay. I can call um, uh, Judy, who's the secretary. It's actually and, uh, the 18th. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. Yeah. This is the third Thursday. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm trying to yeah. tell, tell them that we have something on the agenda for an emergency and see if we can get a forum to, uh, to come in and meet just on this specific area. Okay. They can make a, I'm sure that they can make a ruling that it is illegal and it shouldn't be um, done. And I'm sure that they can issue a cease and desist, uh, which would give the town some conservation a little more teeth and they'll uh, ripping things down and, you know, taking things down or whatever. So okay, they proceed it. Especially yeah. where the chief thinks that this is a hazard and, and uh, I also do. Somebody's going to get hurt. Okay. Uh, do you want us to come? Would, would yeah. you know, us showing up I, I make a difference? Over. Yeah, I just yeah. I just need to check with her and make sure that we can get a form and get Okay, that. and I think it's important that you come. Yeah. yeah. Yes, because, the, yeah. you know, the Again, the reasons for what you're doing are the you really have to make the case. Right. Yeah. Um, because because we have rules that right. prevent right. this from happening for good reason. Right. 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 For of good course. reason we want to keep trees on the river. Of course. So you've got to make sure that there's a really good case for what you're asking, mm -hmm. which I think right, you know, well, I know I know we just recently we've we've had um, an engineer approach the commission. So we have a fire pit down near, um, near the river and it's denied. Uh, so if they deny a uh, landowner permission to put one down near the river, then what right to the, the juveniles have a right to go in there and make their own fire pit, which is, which is totally illegal. So, uh, and if it does, and everything is dry there, I mean, there's plenty of water to put it out, but you have to get the engine in there to pump the water, so. Uh, you could do it. You could get an engine. If, 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 if
Yeah. Well, what I'd like to say is I'd like to see the, the board members talk about it first and foremost. But I think ultimately I'd like to have it presented in front of the North the North River Commission first, see what their feelings are on it. If they give us a go ahead and that's the case, then we can probably come together. I'm not sure we can come to a decision. To yeah, right. But without the North River Commission's approval, right. and that's why I'm saying yeah, our vote would be irrelevant anyway. It's just sitting here raising hands and, and until we could do it. Um, I can't promise the end result. I can certainly say sorry for what you're going through. Um, and it sounds like the best course of action may be that, but ultimately, where the North River watershed is, is the ruling authority. We need to hear from them first and foremost. Then, then we as a board can come together and... and they, they may also uh, might be able to get a rule of the uh, environmental police to help with the local police. Uh, and the environmental police are... are, are um, Absolutely. On all environmental and they have fancy quads and bikes and all that stuff. Can you give them a reply for a quad? No. No, by foot. Yeah. Really? No, that's, that's one of the problems yeah. with... Yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a 10-minute walk from the street and again if the cars are parked down at the uh, where they're supposed to be parked you know you or sometimes they're parked down a canoe ramp you don't see the cars you down there you okay. know it's 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 a hike yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. parents dropping the kids off so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. parents are dropping them off i saw it the other so day. it isn't like we're not trying to patrol it it's, uh, it's in a very remote area yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. understood completely like yeah. i said we used to look for those yeah, areas too a long exactly. time ago <laughs> Right, right um, now, the people that are most affected by this are in this room. But keep in mind that this is not just us. If the town is liable for something that happens here, yep. this affects everybody else in town. There's a lot of adults in town that don't know this is happening. There's a lot of people that are just a quarter of a mile away that don't know yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're the most affected in this room right, right now. Right. We're the and most affected, but it's really had gone everybody and, in town. And, Talk to some of the other people on the right. other end of Brick Hill and Auto 139 who walk on that street yeah. and used to walk on I it all the time. Yeah. Don't walk on it anymore because yeah. yeah. you'll get killed or you'll get screamed at by a bunch of drunken kids. Right. And we as a board understand that completely and we'll certainly take that in. But as as a board, it's great. You know, thank you all for coming in and, and speaking. But until the, the North River Association says, <coughs> okay, yeah, if that's conservation land, we won't stop them from making a decision. Then, then we'll then we'll make the decision right away. You know, we'll have to put it as a vote. I can't promise what it'll be. I can't speak for the other members of the board, uh, but we will have a, a quick vote and and make a determination from there. Then it comes to an issue of who's going to pay for the removal, how we're going to get it done, what's the safe best way to do it. But we'll have to proceed down that road once we get there. I know, I know quite a lot of them when they when they. Uh, when somebody wants to do something, they come to conservation first and they get approval. Yes. Because that's oh, the first, okay. Yes. That's the first thing that we ask them. Have you been to conservation and did you get approval to do this? Okay. Yes, we did. Uh, they're waiting on your approval before they approve it, you know, whatever. So I think it, it would be better to have some type of a letter from um, Pembroke Conservation to say that this is a problem area down there. We're listening to the residents and what took place here tonight. And then that would give the commission a little more uh, teeth. Okay, say we need to act on this right away. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's equally, you know, in your charge is preserving that land. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And stewarding it, and, and clearly, what's going on is an abuse. Of right. The land. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, and I, I think, um, again, I still think there needs to be enforcement. I, I don't think we're going to get away from it. And I think the enforcement part will be a little easier once you take away the 80% draw, if that is taken away. I really hope that that is the case. It's a matter of time. We'll see if the tree is going to kill the tree anyway. Yeah, right. we need the chief to say. Yes? <laughs> I'm sorry, what else did you have to do? It's on the interim. Without removing the trees, what's the possibility of getting the platforms and ropes removed? Because that is something under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission doesn't need request from the north. I mean, that should be done immediately. Mm -hmm. And then I will make sure that my patrol guys step up enforcement down there. Not that we haven't already. I mean, I don't want people to think, well, I'm going down there. Yeah. You are. Because you are. we've you are. gone down there. Oh, the same yeah. guys oh, in plain clothes. Uh, we, we've, we've done that. But you still have that attraction. 
And that, again, is the 80%. And that's something that this board can rule on right now to get rid of that. Now, I don't know what the, the mechanism is to get somebody down there to do that, but right. you know, if it was a pothole in the DPW, they'd be looking to send guys out with some film. Correct. Yeah. Um, is there anything that can be done about the biofit? Is it the same with that? I mean, what do you do then? Is it a circle of stones or a pit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there'll be... There's a stone wall, and we reach out. Yeah, that's... That's extremely scary. I don't know what the notice. Gregory is all the way coming. And the ropes. And the ropes. And the ropes. You better go to climber. Right, climber. I'm not sending my guys up on the tree. You can't get a bucket. Yes. You can't get a truck. You can't get a truck. What did they ask? A bucket truck. They can't get a truck. No, I was just inquiring as far as what we need, like if we contact the DPW to go out there to look at the platforms tomorrow. Uh, granted, I know they've got a whole bunch of their own projects going on, but if we can get a DPW agent in here, uh, okay. Hey guys, yeah. yeah. sorry, we're just five conversations at once. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yes, go ahead. The, the DPW does come down. Um, they've come down to visit us. We've had some issues, yeah. um, and um, the, there is a turnout where it's illegal for them to park. Yeah. But the DPW could park there, and then a couple of, of DPW workers could go in and dismantle the, um, the platform and the rope swing with, within three, four hours maximum. Um, with a couple of guys, that could be done. Right. Yeah, right. It looks like they you need a tree yeah, you need a tree climber in order to do that. Yeah, that wouldn't be a DPW <laughs> type job. That would be a, a, a tree. And again, I'm not being negative. I'm just saying. Okay, you, you would need a tree climber and sure and, and all of that. Oh yeah, we can get you a tree climber. <laughs> we can get you a tree climber if you give us permission. We'll get you a tree climber and get rid of that platform. Yeah. Which, as as um, it was already said, those nails in there, the way they are abusing the tree, the tree's going to die anyway. Right. So get rid of that. Get rid of the swing. Um, you you but they won't put it back up. Again. Oh, no question. Yeah. Well, there's no question, which is why we. You know, but it will put them it. on notice. Right. It will put them on notice, and what I'm proposing is we. Brick Kiln Lane residents help the police. Of course. And get, let us organize together with the police. I'm willing. I'm willing to help organize this group. And we will become a force to say, no more. Mm -hmm. You're not going to abuse this area. And uh, I remember, somebody said. I remember Bob many years ago. There used to be a big sign, yeah, right yes, when you went. Yes, there was. Yep. Right. Well, that's what took down. That's the whole. Yeah. Like, so but every that, time we've put signage in that whole area, within weeks, yeah, it disappears. Yep. Yeah. Right. The Boy I, Scouts I had the signs up there. there. It just continually <coughs> disappears, and after a while, we thought again with all of this rubbish, we could put containers up there but we didn't feel that that was what you wanted to see on the side of your your road but if wow. there was containers maybe somebody might put something in it wow, i mean great. but uh Isn't that no. what they just did up at plum island they took all the containers and dumpsters away because they were being used for household trash and just right. well this, this, these are the problems you have to weigh on a situation like this but i do what, think what do we what do you do to correct it that isn't going to be more harmful on the longer on the longer end of it your suggestions about taking the path i think is great in a short term basis it's short term but they're very uh ingenuous bunch of people uh now maybe we're okay we're the 15th of august we only have two more weeks of of summer maybe by taking it down now it'll keep it from being put back up 
this year. That doesn't, that's not a long-term situation. I'd like to think that taking the swing out is going to stop the congregation, but what I've seen over the years is unfortunately the barn door is open and they've already found a place they can go and sit and drink beer and not be bothered. And it's going to take a lot of hard work to convince them that that's not the place to be. And it's going to take us all to do that. I mean, we that's can't, right. we, we, we all have to do it, but it, it's there. Them. I mean, I think we see it. I got to tell you, Tubbs Meadow was a perfect example to us. I mean, to get to Tubbs Meadow where these kids congregated had to be half a mile walkable well, in any, any direction. And yet every Friday and every Saturday it was there and the same kind of mess of cans was there every morning and it took a consolidated effort to finally convince them that no, but this they were no longer welcome in that. This area. is not every Friday and every Saturday night. Oh no, this is every single day right. and night. How oh, I'm saying, Friday. That was this was yeah. this was a year round, almost yeah. a year round meeting place on the on the weekends for what we assume was college age kids that were home for the weekend. And I can't prove that. I didn't go and ask them what they were, but that there was that kind of thing. It, we finally that we still have the problem every so often somebody remembers oh we used to do this and we get a call or the next day we find the 200 beer cans sitting around the fire pit that's that's it but it's it got better it definitely got a lot better yeah. well we can organize and but we need to get rid of the amusement park then we organize as a brick kiln lane association work with the police and this can this can this is possible okay. it's how willing are we to protect our environment it's really it, it all boils down to that but we need your help we need the police we need the north river commission we need everybody to work together and say stop this is not going to happen this is illegal what they're doing what this gentleman said they are being illegal and we as citizens have a right to say it's illegal stop no more i think i think unfortunately not reflecting on any of us here it's some of how we brought up how the children were brought up now okay. they have no respect for anything they reach a certain age and now they're on their own and they're going to do it all and this is what happens i'd like to think we could cure that but unfortunately that i don't think we're in all fairness there's also adults going out there that are doing things that are still hazardous and, and to echo what stephanie said you can't just make this a police problem it's just not an enforcement problem at all